All right, everyone. Today we have a very special guest. We have Stephen Garbett here with us, who is the founder of the Sports Initiative. And right now, uh, well, in a few weeks, the Winter Olympics is starting. So this is kind of like the right timing. I'm, I'm hoping to see you there, <laughs> like in coverage somehow, you know, so hopefully we can, if anyone from, you know, I don't know which studios covering the Olympics, but, you know, we can get him watching his video. I uh, would love to have you see, I uh, would love, love to have you covered over there as well. So um, happy to have you just introduce yourself, Stephen, because if I ask questions, I'm just going to butcher it. And I'm sure you've done a ton of these intros. So why don't you take it away and just tell us a little bit about yourself and then um, your initiative um, maybe after that. Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. And I'm excited to be here and talk a little bit about the sports initiative. So uh, I'm a, I'm, I actually just retired. I was an eight-time Team USA national team athlete. I've been competing at the top level of sports for Team USA for a very long time now. And um, over the years, I've realized that athletes at the Olympic level going for the Olympics representing their countries struggle with funding. And um, it, I've wanted to come up with a solution. And I also saw it at Little League. Uh, you notice Little League kids that can't participate in sports because their moms and dads can't afford the programs or high school programs that end up closing the programs because they don't have the funds to buy the equipment that's necessary. And I've been trying to figure out a solution for the last seven years. How can we solve this to help fund athletes? And that's where I designed and came up with the sports initiative. I, I saw the need for athlete support and athlete help. And I also saw the market, the growing market in the NFT space. And I realized there's a unique position right now where if I launch an NFT that's designed to provide my community with access to professional athletes and develop a really cool sporting community to be the best sports community on the blockchain, and we then use it to fund the athletes. And I was like, that's, that's what I want to do. So um, I've been going out to a lot of professional athletes that are friends of myself and talking to them about the project. And all of them that I've been talking to are jumping on board. So right now, we have uh, seven Olympic and Paralympic medalists that have joined the board. We have NHL players, we have NFL players, um, and we have a lot more that are joining. Every, every day I'm talking to athletes, they're joining it. And um, it's a really, really cool project. So the way that most projects are, and there's, there are a lot of athletes out there that are um, starting their own projects, but they're designed to help fund themselves. And I absolutely love it because I think that's something that that's, this space allows athletes and everybody to do. This is more of a philanthropic type project where we're designed to help the community and help everybody out. So we, we don't, I don't want to, I'm not designing this to help myself get better. I'm designing it to help all of the next generation of athletes. Yeah. And that's why the athletes are jumping on board. So yeah. it's uh, really exciting. Yeah, no, I, that's something that I was hoping 20, end of 2021, that more projects will have real world use case. And yours definitely stood out along with a couple of others that's going to, that's standing out this year. And I'm super excited that, you know, you, someone is putting the work behind it to really, be filling traffic and do something for sports youth, especially. Um, but before we jump more into the project, I'm sure a lot of viewers want to know a little bit more about you because uh, I did some little bit of digging. Uh, so yeah. how did and I want to take a peek behind the minds of a, a, um, you know high tier you know pro athletes, which I think you fall into the category of, <laughs> and kind of what it takes to get there. What kind of pivoted you to you know want to be the top of your sport and how did you get into the sport in the first place and yep. and um, what, did you go to Olympics yourself? I'm, I, I didn't find that as a, and then, yeah, yeah, so I was going for this last Olympics and I had an up and down season this year. Um, I had a chance to go if I did well in my last two races and I got COVID over the holiday oh, and man. got really, really sick, uh, lost about 10 pounds. I was wow. cleared for competition three hours before um, the official training start and I, my body just didn't have it. It just took it out of it. I didn't eat well, so I wasn't able to make it to this game. So I was going for this one. Um, this was the second one I was going for the last games. I actually broke my ankle going into it. So I had some injuries and illnesses that took me out. So it was brutal, but um, I still love the Olympics and I've been blessed to be able to compete at the highest level for a long time. And uh, a lot of people wonder how I get in the sport of skeleton because it's not for everybody. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. We, we travel at speeds up to 90 miles an hour face Ooh. first with our chin, just an inch off the ice. So it's uh it's definitely not for the faint of heart, but I actually didn't know about the sport until 2010. I uh, came back to Colorado to visit my grandma. She was ill in the hospital and all of a sudden I got sick. Body was shutting down. Doctors couldn't figure out what was going on with me. And during that time, I was in the hospital for three and a half weeks and I saw a skeleton on the Olympics. And that trip really changed my mindset. And I said, if I get healthy, I want to do two things. First, no one in my family had ever graduated college. I wanted to be the first to do that. 
And then second, I was like, I want to try the sport of skeleton. That looks like a lot of fun. Um, so I graduated college, tried skeleton, and the coaches came to me and said, you actually have the abilities that we're looking for, but it's up to you. You have to make some major sacrifices. Yeah. But that trip in the hospital really changed the way I view the world. And it made me realize that life is short and we don't know how much time we have. So go after the goals that you have in this world and go, doesn't matter what anybody else says, you can achieve them. You just have to set your mind to it. So I've changed my mind to setting really, really high goals for myself and working towards them and achieving them. And then also surrounding myself by positive people who want to continue to um, excel in the world. And I've been very blessed and fortunate to meet so many amazing people over the last eight years and do what I've been able to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I got goosebumps hearing it because similar to you, I was in the hospital a bit. I was in the hospital a lot of times in my youth. I had asthma growing up and I just made a promise to God. And I said, if I get better, I'll do every single sport and manageable. And I did, I got better. And I, I kind of uh, made that decision. I, I, I uh, wish I had more presence of mind back then to make higher goals, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it definitely steered me in the right way. And I'm glad it steered you in this way. I was curious. Uh, I think you went to college. I saw in Southern California, uh, South Carolina, actually. South Carolina. USC. Okay. I'm sorry. The real USC. Uh, okay. Game All right. <laughs> the real USC. I saw the USC part and I thought Southern California. I was like, there's no snow there or winter, but okay. So there is like cold weather sports in uh, South Carolina. No, no, there's no cold weather sports <laughs> okay. there either. Yeah. That's just, it's actually probably hotter there than it is in uh, uh, California. Um, so yeah, during college, I didn't do it. I just trained and got my body uh, athletically ready. And okay. then once done with university that's when I um, decided to pursue it I see okay and how did when did uh, NFTs uh, started coming onto your radar uh, what how did you get the idea for this to be you know utilized through this platform why not you know Kickstarter or, or through yep. some other platforms because you've had experience like seven years prior with I'm sure the different entities yep. like kind of guide us through kind of what happened there actually it's a great question so uh in 2017, and during that last bull run is when I yeah. was active in crypto, and that's what got me started in it. And I dabbled a little bit in crypto and some NFTs back then, and then I, I exited the market during the bear market, which was, uh, I used to look at it now, and I'm like, you had the knowledge, you should have just continued. Uh, but I got back in at the beginning of last year, so not this year, um, right as the bull run was starting and been able to capitalize and dive really, really, really deep. And with understanding, the first time I got involved with NFTs, I didn't understand the technology behind it, but this bull run made me uh, research the market and understand it more. And I realized the utility and how the contracting works and how it can actually change the world. And that's what really made me drive. And it's funny how you asked about the um, other crowdfunding platforms and stuff that are out there. Actually, seven years ago, um, it was actually six and a half years ago, I brought an idea to a group of investors of mine and I, they all loved it. I just didn't have the time to pursue it. And the very next year, Omaze fundraising platform came out with the exact diagram that I had written up in this investment. And I was like, well, that's an amazing platform. And I'm actually happy that somebody was able to create it because that's helped yeah. so many people out there. And I, I absolutely love what they're doing at Omaze. Um, but I wanted to be able to do something to help that. And I've been continuing to look um, for that opportunity. And when I really realized the true power of NFTs and the utility and what the future is going to be, we're so early on this mm -hmm. that uh, people are really start to, starting to educate. And when you truly realize what it is, your mind it just changes and you just see, see different. So that's uh, really why I wanted to use NFTs because there's so many overpopulated um, platforms that can, uh, are out there that are fundraising platforms. Yeah. But also the design concept of it. So the way that we're designing this NFT is um, the, all the sales from the NFT after we pay for the taxes and the developers are all going to be split. So 70% of it is going to go into a crypto interest earning account. And we're going to use that interest from the account to pay and fund athletes. So that way it's a capital reservoir that we are able to keep and grow. So it's not just a one-time support for athletes. It'll be able to continue to build year and year um, and get more and help more. So I'm uh, really excited about that. And then we have 15% of the funds that are going to go back to our community and that are supporting the project, all of our NFT holders. And we have really cool, one of a kind, unique athlete experiences that we're doing. So we're, we're bringing people out. We're doing a bobsled ride with me out in Utah. Um, one of our advisors, uh, Noah Elliott, he's a Paralympic uh, medalist uh, that's a snowboarder. He's like, we're going to do a day on the mountain. So we're flying some of one of our NFT holders out to be able to do a day on the mountain. Wow. Snowboarding with an Olympic medalist. Wow. Uh, 
So we have really cool, we have more lined up, but that one, uh, those two we've released. And we're also doing one with a Paralympic uh, medalist that's a triathlete, go out and train. You can either run, bike, or swim out in California with a Paralympic nice. uh, medalist. So we have really cool ones. We have a bunch more cool ones that we haven't released yet that are going to wow. be coming in the next few weeks. So uh, really wow. excited about it. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting more goosebumps because that's, I, when you said triathlete, I do triathlons. Well, I used to do triathlons and I yep. just did like a cold plunge yesterday and it really invigorated me to try to do it again. And I would love to do a, uh, even a, a, a Paralympic uh, athlete. That would be amazing. And I saw yeah. it on there, a skeleton, a skeleton going down a skeleton run as one of them. I'm like, I'm not sure I would do that. <laughs> like, how would that even work? Because it's usually one person, right? I don't know how that would work yeah. with two. I might die going down <laughs> one of those uh, tracks. Yeah. Yeah. No, with the skeleton run, what we're doing is we'll go from halfway down the track. And it's just okay. like, it's a really fun slide. It's safe. Um, okay. Uh, it's safe for people to go down. And then the bobsled ride, will, depending on, on the time of the year and stuff like that, we'll either go from a little bit higher up or yeah. I might be able to get us with an Olympic driver. I'm still scheduling that right now, depending wow. on time where we would go from the top of the track with an Olympic driver. So we got a lot of really, really cool utility plan in that form of sense uh, to give back to the community that's supporting. So it's really, really cool. That's, that's amazing. So uh, the question I had was what kind of drove you even seven years ago to go more philanthropic? Is it because your own experience of trying to compete for the trials and make the Olympics and your own tribulations uh, or is it something yeah. more catalytic than that? Um, no, it actually was. So I, I'm very fortunate and blessed that I've been able to have a good solid support group that has helped um, fund me to make and make it to where that I can compete at the level that I do and be able to follow my dreams. But I've seen a lot of athletes that don't have that community around them that's supporting them as much. And it's, it's hard. Like even with myself, it is very, very hard to be able to, um, to be able to compete at this top level because you're sacrificing a lot with your career going forward, but then you're also at the, the cost of training, everyday training is very, very expensive. So I've seen so many people that have the drive and have the passion and want to, but then they, they didn't have it. So I'm like, how, how can I help? I was like, I, I've been blessed by being able to have an amazing community help support me. I, and I know most athletes that I know that have made it to the top level, they, they, you don't get there on your own. It takes a community, it yeah. takes a team to make it to that top level in any sport. So we all want to give back and we all want to help the next generation because we all know that we wouldn't be where we're at without all of that help. So this is just really setting up a way that we can create a program that helps more people because I can help just individually, but if I set a community that wants to help and also love sports and just wants to talk about sports and do all things sports, um, we can really do something that's very, very special. And it's so early on in the space that we can be that go-to brand for being the best community on the spot blockchain that's that's the goal that's one of the uh, missions of our business got it so then doesn't necessarily have to be um for those shooting for olympics that could yeah. be for any professional sports um exactly. yeah. yeah well it doesn't even have to be professional sports it could be youth sports it could be little league sports so that's uh that actually brings up a great topic is uh, the, one of the utilities of holding the nfts mm -hmm. so if you hold an nft you'll be able to submit an athlete that we can fund an athlete oh, okay a club so if you have a local club that you know oh i want to try to support them you can submit them and then we vote on oh that gives you voting power to vote because mm -hmm. we'll have a DAO that we're setting up and yeah. it also allows you to vote on the how much funds we give to each person community or team so that's part of the power that is involved and that's part of the utility behind holding the nft itself yeah that you actually answered one of the questions that i have listed here is how do we uh, or how do you determine which athletes or organizations would get your support if, it is, if it's a DAO 100% or is it, you know, kind of a mixed bag or is there a council? I'm seeing a lot of councils nowadays in, uh, in yep. NFT projects. So I think you, yep. you answered that. Yeah. Yep. So we're setting up a DAO and the way the DAO is established. So we're bringing on these uh, athletes on our advisory board mm -hmm. and they're experts in their sports because obviously they've made it to the top level. They've medaled, they're playing in the NFL. And we're going to use their knowledge because they've seen every level of sport and they can help guide us as a community to say it's bet we can best use it, the funds here to be able to maximize the, the support that we give. So I want to be able to use their knowledge and resource. So what I'm doing is I'm structuring it where the advisory board gets 45% voting power. Okay. Then our community. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So that way we can use them as experts. And then All our right. community, we want our community to have the, the next most power 
has 40%. So they're right behind our advisory boards. We want our community to really be involved, selecting and help and deciding who we fund. And then the TSI team, myself and, and everybody else on the team, we have a 15% voting power just uh, as the team because we have passions for people and we just want to be able to uh, uh, vote with, uh, with the community and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, it's it's very unique in the space, and I'll go over an example in a second. Um, but just rewinding back a little tiny bit, uh, because NFT land, there's a lot of uh, good things that go on, and everything's very public. So uh, the question is me, because I run my my channel is kind of finance in a way. <laughs> it kind of yep. no one wanted to watch my channel when it was couples finance, <laughs> but it was <laughs> NFTs. So I've been trying to bridge the gap, help people not to get, you know, completely wrecked or rug pulled out there. And definitely you guys are not doing that. So my question is more of a financial question for the, yep. um, the, uh, the money that's being pulled to help, to help the athletes, uh, yep. because a lot of poor decisions, uh, decisions could really uh, ruin, you know, uh, a treasury. Uh, how is that a DAO as well? Is that kind of more uh, subjected to um, the, the board or is it something that, um, how is it being managed by a, a, a treasury manager or how's that being oversight? Yep, so we're, we're gonna be establishing it. So that way it's, a, it's gonna be managed by um, the, the community, the DAO. So we want that pool of funds to be something that is transparent and everybody can see. Um, the way that we're, we wanna structure it is we use 50% of the funds and put it in stable coins. So that way we okay. make sure that anything happens in the market, whether it goes up or down, yep. we continue to have a reserve. And then the other 50%, we want to we'll have our DAO, our community be able to vote, but we want to stay in tier one coins and above. So Bitcoin, Ethereum really are the two that we want to stay in because we want to make it so they can grow, but we want to also keep it stable because we don't want to risk those funds. Right. Those funds, want, but we also want to be able to have the upside growth within the industry. So that's the way that we're looking at establishing it. And that's, you're actually getting exclusive because I haven't uh, announced that in the community yet. So okay. that's, yeah, we, we like the alpha here. Yeah, no, that, thank you for sharing that because uh, people's going to ask that anyways, right? And, and because of blockchain, it's going to be transparent anyways. I was just exactly. more cur curious. And, and that's a good thing about blockchain is that when you give these supports to these athletes, people can see that they're actually number one, going to the athletes and then number two, uh, maybe the athletes will like it or not, but what they do with it, yeah, they can see, you know, what's happening with that money. I um, mean, it, yep. it lands at the right place. So uh, that's yep. awesome. And, and, that, and that's why we are setting it up the way that we are because it is transparent on the blockchain, but also we want to be transparent with our community that we're, we're going to be here to help. And we're not just going to be a lot of, there's, like you said, there's a lot of projects that are just coming up and they're these pump and dumps. We're setting up a community to continue to stay around for years to come. And we're, if we set it up correctly, how we have it structured it's designed to be able to last through time. So that's, that's what's really exciting. You know, that is exciting. Just to echo on that, I, it, I, had got, I got my first taste of what you're launching um, just yesterday. And okay. I bought a Budweiser NFT. I had no idea what I was getting involved into. This is my totally degenerate play of 2022. And it's only been like three weeks in. And what they did was they um, sponsored 22 up and coming musicians, very specific. So it's not, you know, uh, not yet at least, unless you're going into the music realm <laughs> later on. They're not uh, uh, um, competitors of yours. And I would have never heard of these artists if it was not for this NFT. And yep. um, I tagged them on, on my post. I got two artists. They're both in um, Latin American countries. I don't know if they speak English, but I started listening to their music. And, that, yeah. and they tagged me back. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? Like, it's very interactive. Um, yep. I guess what I'm saying is that I find a, a more, a, a, like, a, I, I find more synergy with, I find that I'm rooting for these guys more because we found them. A, 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 I, I'm I'm kind of connected with them through an NFT, and I could totally see that for the sports world, where you know you want to support someone through whether it be the Olympics or you know um, a, a tournament, a basketball tournament, whatever it may be. Uh, I just yeah. get really excited by the idea. I don't know how it's going to be. It's only been two days, but I feel like I'm already a part of their journey <laughs> already. Yep, that's very exciting. Yeah. So uh, I guess the last question is, how do you, you said you wanted to last through time, which is great, of course. Like, what do you envision this in three to five years? I, how I imagined it was just, wow, I can't wait to see a TSI badge on the Olympics. <laughs> yep. And then, you know, um, if, if possible, have some utility and assets back to, to the people who supported them. Um, yep. You know, are you going to become an agency? Like, what's what do you envision this going to be in like three to five years time? So in three to five years, um, well, what, what the plan is, we're going to have this first Genesis drop. And then we want to establish four small drops a year based around the, the 
uh, months that sports are around. So summer sports, winter sports, fall sports, and spring sports. Mm, and as we do that, we're going to have those uh, NFT drops and we're going to continue to build to the reserve, but also tie them together with really cool utilities that we're, uh, if you hold a Genesis drop and those, it's going to give you special privileges. So the ultimate goal is to continue to grow the community to support as many people as possible. So we, we don't want to transfer into a sports agency or anything like that, but we do want to make sure we support people. So we're going to continue to bring on professional athletes and more athletes, not, not just at the beginning of the project, throughout the project. Um, right now, I know I have a few very high profile athletes, their friends that are like, hey, we want to do this. We can't do it right now because our agents, we, we, we're tied up with some stuff. But here mm -hmm. in six months, they're like, come back to us. We want to get on. We want to we want to help, which is really, really exciting because it's like that's after the drop where we're going to continue to add more of these uh, professional athletes um, to continue to help with the community. So the, really the ultimate long term goal is I want to be able to be that um, discord channel where everybody comes and talks sports. It's like yeah. we're going to have. Uh, fantasy leagues and we're going to have prizes for our fantasy leagues we're going to have sports talk channels we're going to have ama with professional athletes and uh, I'm, I'm not going to let this one out because my uh, marketing team uh, would be <laughs> really really mad at me they have a tough plan but we have some uh, exclusive amas that uh, are going to be going on uh, coming up soon that are going to provide some really cool stuff that's awesome yeah i i, I initially saw it as more uh just when I at face value, when I saw that it's, it's kind of uh, Olympic focus, but as I dive deeper into the board and then now that you're talking about seasonal sports, it can, I mean, it definitely encompasses a, a lot broader uh, sports yeah. just vision. So that's something great to hear. Cause uh, I, a lot of people I think is multidisciplinary when they're in high school uh, and then yep. getting to the, the more professional level, we can definitely, you know, um, they're probably more focused. Right. Uh, so yep. there's something for everyone, it seems, but yeah, it sounds, it sounds, it sounds like it's, you know, very exciting. Uh, this is the first interview where I get goosebumps every like 10 minutes talking to you because it just sounds like a journey I want to be a part of because I love sports. Um, and I could just think of uh, so many things that uh, even when I growing up here in San Francisco, there wasn't much uh, now versus back then. There's, yep. there's, there's lots of sports camps now in San Francisco, but I imagine a lot of places, they don't have these facilities. They don't have yep. a lot of things that they need. Yeah. Yep. And, and that's where we want to provide. We do want to provide Olympic hopefuls that are going for the Olympics. Yes, we do want to help them, but we also want to be able, there for the community. We want to be able to help a high school program that they need some basketball, baseballs, whatever, or uh, gear, whatever, football gear, whatever it is. Um, we want to be there to support. And the cool thing is that our community is going to be the ones that help us decide what areas we, we support and where these teams are and everything like that, which is really, really exciting because it involves the community in selecting, oh, hey, my local club can benefit from me having this. So right. something uh, that it's just not, uh, seen out there. We also have some really cool stuff that's going to be involved with our art that, um, I know we haven't uh, shown our art yet in our discord yeah. where, where we've been building it. Our artists are doing a great job. Our artist Keith, he's uh, really, really good at what he does, but I'm working with, uh, ether cards as our developers. And mm -hmm. these guys are very, very smart. They've been in the industry a long time and we have some really, really cool things that uh, are going to be able to be provided with the uh, with the utility of the holding the NFT based off the artwork alone. So I can't <laughs> can't tell you that stuff yet, but keep yeah. your eyes open because that stuff's going to be really, really you, cool. You already got me. I think I didn't need to buy ten of these. One for the triathlete experience, one for the bobsledding because I went to Park City, Utah. Amazing! I would love to do a bobsled there. Uh, whatever else it is, like to live my dreams at a somewhat professional level. I even get those tips because I play recreational tournaments for basketball. Just hearing yeah. those little tips as like will set you apart, you know, uh, yep. it'll be pretty cool to, to have insight into that. Um, so how about you talk about, if you can, you know, I know that it's and to be announced the, the launch date and the uh, mint date and a pre-sale. Uh, is there any details on that? I apologize. I didn't look into the details. Is there a pre-sale? Is there a whitelist, um, the public? And then um, also any, any information about the roadmap that uh, you want to talk about? Yeah, so um, we are having a whitelist. We actually call it our all-stars. So if you join our Discord, um, uh, right now is the easiest time to get whitelisted because we're a very small community. As we grow, it's going to be harder and harder to get on that whitelist. And one of, one of the big advantages of getting on the whitelist early is we are doing special things for our whitelist holders who get on early. So okay. getting, in, getting in now, um, you get exclusive benefits to uh, other things down the road as well, not just now, but down the road. Um, so yeah. getting on the whitelist is very, uh, very important if you want to be a part of the, the project. 
Also, most uh, whitelists, they, you just get special access to buying early before. We're actually discounting uh, whitelists because we know these members, okay. these are the people in our community that got in early and that really want to support us. So our whitelist price for our sale is going to be 0.1 ETH, where okay. our, reg our regular sell is going to be 0.2 ETH. So it's actually... Um, 50 percent less than the uh, regular um, price for the nft so we uh, and we wanted to reward the people in our community that gets in early and and helps us spread the message so um, we want as we want people to join the whitelist and we're excited about it yeah i saw a little note uh that you guys chose ethereum platform on purpose and no longer go on a polygon and, and that speaks on something special and utility i think you mentioned right Yep. So originally I wanted to go on to Polygon because I wanted to save on the gas fees. Right. You're in the, everybody knows that we hate Ether gas right now. And after I've been doing a lot of research and talking to the developers, there's, because there's been so much more built on the Ether platform, it allows us to do so much more and provide different utilities that I couldn't do uh, on Polygon right now. So I decided to adjust it and we're going to be going on Ether for the utility specific for the token holders, which uh, like I said, it's some really, really cool stuff. And I want to tell you, yeah, I'm yeah. so excited about it, no. but I, I got to wait because my, uh, my marketing uh, department would really be upset with me if I let that yeah, out yeah. of the bag. No problem. So we're looking at a potentially a February uh, mint, or are you thinking uh, January? Because it's January is almost ending now. Yeah, yeah January is already ending. So we're looking more towards the end of February, beginning of, of March. So what, what we want to do is we want to utilize the the Olympics and Paralympics to help sure. accelerate our cause because that's a lot of the athletes that we'll be supporting and it's going to be a worldwide platform. Yeah. So I, I wanted to do it in February, uh, middle of February, right in the middle of the Olympics, but every I've been DM'd and messaged by a lot of people in my community that's saying, what about the Paralympics? It's right after we can utilize right. that as well to help grow our community. So I, I, what I do is I always take uh, what our community is asking and I look at it and I look at the strategic planning for the project and I want to do what's best for the community. So I'm always listening to our community, taking tips and advice. So it's looking like we're going to be uh, we're end of February, beginning of March with that launch um, to make sure we utilize the whole uh, Olympics for marketing as and growing our community and also the Paralympics. Awesome. Yeah. I hope I get a social surprise and actually see you guys on the Olympics co uh, coverage sure. and you might have that already. So yeah, uh, so I'm cool. working on some special things like hmm. that. And um, yeah, stay tuned. We're, we're about to launch. Uh, we're, we're about to announce some things that we have going on specifically with athletes that are going to be there. So we'll, I'll yeah. leave that little, little <laughs> out there. <laughs> yeah, no, you already got me like I, 2022. I already, I already said this in my channel that there's already a change in NFT, you know, you know just uh, people coming in and with good utility, actual, actual roadmaps. Okay. And, yeah. um, and actual docs founders like yourself. So I appreciate you as being one of the, the catalysts in the space, I would say, you know, really spearheading it. Cause it's, it's risky, right? Cause you're out there and then your success is documented. I think you're going to be success. Um, see, definitely what I feel about projects like yourself, it's, it's not like those, you know, bases, like, oh, let's blow up in one night over thing. It's going to take time. It's the actual business, right? <laughs> uh, it's not one of those cash grabs at all. It's definitely for a purpose. And, and uh, those mission focus projects is really what I um, see myself spending a lot on. Beginning of 22, I did a lot of those, a lot of female empowerment, yeah. uh, uh, mission focus, yep. uh, just really helping people's journey. So I, I'm, I'm super excited um, that you joined today to speak a little bit about your project. Uh, I'm really looking for people um, to talk to for long term. So hopefully you come on board uh, and talk a little bit later and down the year as well as see your progress and then what's happening. And I would love to have you back here. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, been a, a privilege being able to come on here and talk to you about the sports initiative. And I would love to come back on and talk to you about the updates and cool things that we got going on with the project and give you some insider stuff. Uh, we can always give you a little bit of extra stuff to send out to the community. Right, right. I usually talk about this before, but I forgot. Maybe we can even give like one or two whitelist spots or all-star spots. Um, whoever, you know, joins your Discord. I'll put all the links down below and is active, yeah. okay? Um, and yeah, make sure that they follow that. you. I yeah. actually like that. Let, let, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm going okay, to give you four whitelist spots. Let's give okay. you four for your community because I want to, your community, I want you to be able to support your community. So we'll set it up where we can give you a four to give out to whoever you would like to in your community. Okay. Great. Well, you guys heard from Steven. I usually talk about this before, but I totally forgot. <laughs> it's a Saturday. We're working. We're working hard, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, be great. Yeah. I'll randomly pick it and I'll make sure that, you know, they're following you and everything like that. So 
Um, uh, really appreciate your time. Um, is there anything uh, else that you want to uh, talk about? I, for, I forgot to ask you one, if there's anything lastly that you want to bring up, but uh, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, yeah no, uh, all that I could say is if you guys like sports and you like community-based programs, this is the program for you. We really are going to be uh, doing a lot in the space. And if you are an athlete or a professional athlete and you want to help join, uh, reach out to me personally. I, I want to continue talking to more athletes, but we're excited to continue to build this great community and we'd love to have everybody uh, join us. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time, Stephen. All right. Thanks. Have a good Bye. one.